Habits that keep godly people weak. The true desire of every believer in Christ is to live a godly life. What is godliness? What is it? Godliness is not a vibe. It is not an aura. It is not an impression. Godliness has nothing to do with the vibes you give off or the way you carry yourself. Godliness is a godly moral character. The truth is, the godliest person you may ever have come across may be just an average run-of-the-mill saint. But because they don't have any gifts or talents or influence, you have never picked up the fact this person is a godly person. Because a person can preach or teach does not mean that person is a godly person. Because a person can sing or has great influence or following does not mean that person is a godly person. Being godly involves a belief in God, our Creator and Upholder, and a reverence for His divine character and careful adherence of His holy laws. Being godly involves building one's knowledge of God, having faith in Him and Him alone, and honoring Him as the one true God, and loving Him with all your heart, all your soul, and with all of your mind, and humbling, submitting to His will, depending on Him wholeheartedly, having complete and utter obedience to Him. We are going to look at several things that keep godly men and women weak. These are things that we need to attack and have aggressive attitudes towards them. We are going to look at three habits. Number one is old habits. Number two is sins that easily ensnare us. And number three is ignorance. I will discuss number one and two at the same time. One and two, old habits and sins that easily ensnare us. Ephesians chapter four, verses 22 through 24. That ye put off concerning the former conversation the old man, which is corrupt according to the deceitful lusts, and be renewed in the spirit of your mind, and that ye put on the new man, which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. All believers need to be aware that we are called into newness of life. Our old habits can impede the progress of our walk with God. We all have a past, and we all have a life that we lived prior to being born again. Christ came to save us from our sins and to reconcile us to God. We were not without faults when we received Christ and accepted the new life. You must therefore discipline yourself not to return to your past life and old habits because your body remembers the sins you used to commit and when you were born again, your old habits will try to tempt you at some point. Your flesh will still remember the pleasures it felt when you used to indulge in sin. The body has a way of remembering sin and this is something believers need to put at the forefront of their mind. Your fleshly man, this carnal body is not saved and it will never be saved. Hebrews chapter 12 verse 1 Therefore we also, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which so easily ensnares us, and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us. Look at this life-changing phrase, quote, Let us lay aside every weight and the sin which so easily ensnares us. Each and every one of us, you and I, and your pastor, and the elders at the church you attend, every single one of us have a sin that so easily ensnares us. We all have a sin that so easily trips us up, a sin which so easily and cleverly entangles us. Furthermore, we all have weights we need to lay aside in our lives. Look at other versions of the Bible and how they describe this phrase. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 1, contemporary English version. So, we must get rid of everything that slows us down, especially the sin that just won't let go. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 1, Aramaic Bible in plain English. Let us throw off from us all the weights of the sin which is always ready for us. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 1, literal standard version, having put off every weight and the closely besetting sin. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 1, Weymouth New Testament. Let us fling aside every encumbrance and the sin that so readily entangles our feet. Notice how in Hebrews, 
the author mentions both weight and sin. We all know what sin is, but do you know what weights are? Weights can be things that are not overtly sin, but hinder your way to a godly life. Weights are anything that get in your way to a godly life, and they don't have to be bad things. A weight can be a quote good thing in the eyes of other people. Take for instance being rich. Being rich is not a sin. Having money is not a sin at all, and it is a good thing to have money because having money opens a lot of opportunities. However, when a person falls in love with money, it becomes a weight. They begin to prioritize chasing money rather than chasing God. It becomes a weight. We all need money. There are no two ways about it. We live in an economical world. However, money can become a weight in a person's life. Another example of a weight is, for instance, an individual watching 40 hours a week of TV. Isn't a sin, but we can sure describe it as a weight. Friends that encourage you to sin is weight. Weights in people's lives come in different shapes and sizes, and old habits can be weights. So I ask you today, what is a weight in your life? What in your life is hindering you from walking in godliness? This is why when you are born again, you have to change your lifestyle. And in some cases, you need to even change the people you hang around with. You need to say goodbye to those old friends that encourage those old habits of yours. You need to say goodbye to those people that encouraged you to sin. We cannot receive a new life and continue to exhibit the old nature. If we do, it means we are making a mockery of the sacrifice of Christ. Paul admonished the believers in Ephesians to completely put off the old man, which is corrupt, and be renewed in the spirit of their minds. The same principle applies to us. We must put on the new man, which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. Paul continued his conversation to the believers in Ephesians chapter 4, verses 28 through 29, saying, Let him that stole steal no more, but rather let him labor, working with his hands the thing which is good, that he may have to give to him that needeth. Let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouths, but that which is good to the use of edifying, that it may minister grace unto the hearers. The fruit of repentance must accompany our salvation. Therefore, we cannot import our old habits into our walk with God. Following Christ leads to transformation. The more we walk with God, the more we are changed to become like Christ and to reflect His character. You cannot come to Christ as a fornicator and expect to continue with Him that way. You cannot come to Christ as a thief and keep on stealing. You cannot come to Christ as a liar and continue to tell lies. The evidence that we are true followers of Christ is character refinement. Our lifestyle will begin to conform to the standard of God. We will begin to become more and more godly. Holding on to our old habits will hinder our walk with God. Every day of our lives, we are expected to keep growing into the image and likeness of Christ, while our old habits are expected to be diminishing. It is foolishness to return to our former ways after we have received the life of Christ. Proverbs chapter 26 verse 11 says, As a dog returneth to his vomit, so a fool returneth to his folly. If you still hold on to your old habits, it means that you have not broken the bridge that connects you to your past life and your relationship with the world. Remember the warnings of God in 1 John chapter 2, verses 15-17, through 17, which reads, Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, and the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life, is not of the Father, but is of the world. And the world passeth away, and the lust thereof, but he that doth the will of God abideth forever. 3. Ignorance Ephesians chapter 4, verse 18 Having the understanding darkened, being alienated from the life of God through the ignorance that is in them, because of the blindness of their heart. A darkened understanding can alienate one from the very life of God. Paul knew the danger of ignorance. He knew it is the same as spiritual blindness, and he prayed earnestly for the Ephesian believers 
that the eyes of their understanding may be enlightened. Ignorance will cause believers to sin against God without the least awareness of it. Ignorance reveals a state of spiritual babyhood. It shows how immature people are. Ignorance will lead believers to be led astray. In fact, the devil hides behind people's ignorance to afflict them. He blindfolds them from knowing who they are in Christ. God lamented when his people were ignorant in Hosea chapter 4, verse 6, saying, My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge, because thou hast rejected knowledge. I will also reject thee, that thou shalt be no priest to me, seeing thou hast forgotten the law of thy God. I will also forget thy children. Ignorance is not bliss. It is very dangerous. Believers become ignorant when they fail to take responsibility to be knowledgeable by studying the Word of God. One of the ways a person can grow in godliness is through knowledge of God's Word. How can an individual be obedient to God's laws he does not know about? Rejecting the knowledge of God is a habit that makes godly people weak. By searching the scriptures and learning more about God, we are coming into a greater knowledge of Him and His Word. No one has ever finished the Bible and understood everything. There is still more of God to learn about. We live in an age of deception. We live in an age where the world is covered with deception. One of the reasons the ministry of false teachers and prophets have prospered in our day is because believers are ignorant of what the Word of God says. In some of the churches that we know are led by false teachers, it's not that the congregation is evil or that they were always ungodly people. No, some of them are genuine people looking to find God, but they have been led astray. What will protect you from deception is knowledge of the Word of God. Romans chapter 1 verse 28 And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a reprobate mind to do those things which are not convenient.